Do I need to step on anything here, Andy? Which one are we doing? Ask Rick which one we're doing. band has, has kind of taken off a lot quicker than anything else that I think any of us has been associated with. I think that the things we do, the records we make, the music that we make is, is good enough and, and means enough to us that it deserves to be heard. For me, I've always tried to have you know, like a job that involved music or where you could write or where you can make something. Eastern sky. It's like writing this stuff that you'd like to say. Ignores me. Writing that down, putting it into music, and people you accept it better when it's put into music, you know? Where you're from, you run away. How's that, Rick? Was that any better? And with this session, the Light Wires begin recording their second album. Play your kid. Bassist Mike Montgomery, drummer Rick McCarty, and guitarist Andy Hiddle united with singer-songwriter Jeremy Pinnell to form a band distinguished by Pinnell's original songs and his distinctive styling of them. He doesn't sing as much as he aches out loud. Yeah, the primary thing is his, is his voice. He's just got this big, giant, like, husky sounding voice. We just kind of flush the songs out around that. He just brings all these songs. And uh, at first, we just kind of filled in the holes. But it's become more and more us, all four of us, collectively arranging them. It's just like twice through. Go to the second chorus. We try to get the songs crossed um, as he wrote them and just kind of de develop and expand them a little more. Expand them without asphyxiating them. The songs begin with a few basic chords. The band's challenge is to add to them without losing what they saw as the simple beauty that made them worth recording in the first place. Rick and I come from a more like, you know, loud rock and roll background. It's a challenge for us just to turn down, you know, and just pare it down and, and see how far out of the way we can stay. The songwriting is really sincere and honest and from the heart, you know. Sit down. I think any one of us in that room would probably put the same progression of chords together and we just kind of said, well, that's, you know, I've heard that a thousand times, there's really nothing special. But for some reason when he does it, it just seems so authentic and kind of honest. I'm afraid we'll go. The man whose songs are the centerpiece of the band has little to say about where they come from. I'll play something that sounds, you know, the way, the way I like it. I just kind of start saying stuff, and then I just keep singing it over and over again until I got it. A lot of it's about drugs, and then not necessarily my own struggles, just life and working and making money. And that's all it's really about. I wanted to talk to you tonight, see the flowers fading. But he says people are free to form their own meanings of his words. Trying on my own. And he doesn't know what to say when people ask about them. Whilst the shadows fading. I wish people wouldn't, but. Yeah. Oh, just because nerves and. I don't know. I don't care. I'd rather people just listen. And people are. The Light Wire's debut disc has gotten play on alternative and college radio stations around the country. 
It has also earned some critical praise locally. They all say they don't seek anyone's approval, but kind words printed about them do come in handy. When I send that CD to Mr. Club owner in Chicago or in Nashville or anywhere else, it's nice to send him a copy of that and say, you know, well, look what the editor of City Beat thinks of this. Playing in clubs and selling a few CDs might be as grand as their ambition gets. In their late 20s to early 30s, they are still young enough to play music seriously, but old enough to accept that it may never become more than a highly polished hobby. Some guys will, will get together and they'll have their poker night or whatever. This is kind of that thing for me. It gives you a chance to create, and I think adults don't have a whole lot of opportunity to create. We kind of get used to just going home and plop down on the couch and you're exhausted after your day or whatever. And, and uh, you'll lose your playfulness and you'll lose your creativity and you'll lose kind of any kind of um, push to make something. I think if, if I switched over and started doing this place as my full-time job and I had to be here 80 hours a week, then it would, you, you would not, you would resent being here at certain times and I don't want to feel like that in this place that we've made. Play your acoustic. That place would be their studio. Mine's fine. The acoustic's fine. The band made its first album in bits and pieces in what Mike Montgomery fondly remembers as a sort of guerrilla recording. That last studio that I worked at, it's called Backstage Studios, that place was being sold and it was in the process of being turned over to the new owner. So we had a lot of like uh, late night marathon sessions where Jeremy, I still had a key to the place and Jeremy and I would sneak in at like midnight and stay till eight in the morning, you know, doing guitars or vocals or whatever. They have a more relaxed arena in which to record their second CD. The space in between them sounds real good. They have built their own studio in Cincinnati. And if you and if Pinnell's halting voice won't cooperate after a long night out. I've been up smoking and drinking and <laughs> God knows what, you know. They can throw out that day's session without watching hundreds of dollars go out with it. Gold or platinum records may never hang on the walls. But the fact that they have this place and are free to record their songs here however they want to is success enough. I think if the drive was to sell a million records, eventually every one of the guys in a band would be sacked, you know, for being. Uh, I'd be, I'd be the sack for being too old. I don't want anyone else telling me how it should be marketed or how it should be dressed up or how, it sh how the CD should look or how we should look or how it should sound. It, sh it should sound the way we want it to sound and that's it. You want to do that chorus again? Maybe get to the end of that, that'd be the third chorus. And it could hang on that G. I'm gonna just repeat the. I'd have to pick up a guitar or something to come up with some little thing. Yeah. Having an album that I think I'll be proud of 20 years from now. I think, you know, the one that we did already. I think I'm, all of us are really, really happy and proud of it. So feel yourself for the last time. On one level, I consider that one of the biggest successes. How did I get this far? For the enigmatic frontman, believing that anything more than that can come from this is hard. His other career is mowing lawns in the summertime. During the winter, he has no job at all, giving him time to imagine breaking it big doing this. I think everyone that plays music, as much as they say they don't want to, I think everybody always, you know, always wants to be somebody. Else. 
that these guys in this room, he is. They are the Light Wires. Are we uh, done for tonight? Shame on everyone for giving up when it's hard. I won't give up. I can hold, hold